So how is it going guys and welcome back to another Fallout 4 video and today we're going to be taking a look at 10 rare and unique weapons in the new Code DLC. I've covered quite a few rare weapons on the channel, I think around 5 in total to do with new Code or something like that. And instead of covering the rest of them individually and spreading them out over videos and days, I thought why not just come together and make one big hub video that you guys can go to and sort of compile them all into one. You know, I did this for Far Harbor as well and you guys really enjoyed it. And by the way, a link to the timestamps of each weapon will be in the description down below as well if you are looking for a specific weapon uh, out there. But let's start this video off with some of the weapons that I haven't yet covered. And uh, to begin with, we have the Problem Solver Unique Handmade Rifle. And this weapon is definitely up there in some of the best weapons that you can obtain uh, from Nuke World. It actually has the legendary prefix plus 15% damage after each consecutive hit. And of course that prefix there uh, paired up with the generally fast and controllable fire rate uh, that the handmade rifle has, you know, of course with the magazine size, this makes for one deadly weapon against pretty much any enemy. Now to obtain this weapon, it's essentially during the quest where you have to speak to uh, all three of the gang members. You know, when you first make it to Nuka World, one of the beginning quests are to speak to each of, you know, the gang leaders. You know, you have the operators, the disciples, and the pack. And the one where you get this weapon from is the pack gang leader known as Mason. Upon speaking to Mason for one of the first times that you actually speak to him, uh, during the conversation you'll actually get a speech check uh, which is to basically tell him to do what he's told. It'll pop up in red for you guys as you guys can see there uh, from the gameplay and if you select that and you pass the speech check he will hand you the problem solver and that is the only way you can get this weapon. So unfortunately for those of you out there who have already got past that point in Nuka World, there is no way of you obtaining it. However, there is an alternative weapon for you guys. The Splatter Cannon is pretty much the same weapon. It's a very unique handmade rifle again. Uh, of course, this one instead can actually be purchased in the Nuka Town Market from Aaron. He'll be selling the weapon for upwards of like 11,000 caps, which is a lot of money to pay, but it's pretty much the same thing. It's a different unique weapon or I guess differently named unique weapon, but it does the same thing in the fact that, you know, damage increases after each consecutive hit. So it's essentially like this, you know, if you've already gotten past the point of getting the problem solver where you can't get it anymore, the best choice you have is going for the splatter cannon. Whereas if you haven't got past that point, then you're better off going for the problem solver because while well, the weapon's completely Completely free. But either way, both are great weapons to obtain, definitely ones for you collectors out there. And now moving on to the next weapon, which is Seto's Shiny Slugger. A unique variant of the baseball bat which refills action points on critical hits. And it's also that very cool weapon that we've seen from Bethesda's gameplay stream uh, with the rocket thrusters on the side, which by the way, makes it look very, very badass. Now to obtain the weapon, you'll first need to head to the Safari Adventure. Upon entering there, you'll come across a guy named Sito who will eventually approach you and then start talking to you. And after talking to him for a while, he'll basically ask you to head back to his place and meet his family. And when you do that, you'll then be given the quest known as Safari Adventure. Now, I'm not going to get into too much details on the quest because it is best that you kind of do it yourself and experience it yourself. Uh, but just know that when you complete this quest, you will eventually be given from Sito, Sito's Shiny Slugger. Again, this is a great melee weapon in general, especially when paired up with certain melee, you know, park builds and stuff like that. And uh, I mean, the weapon looks badass, especially with those freaking thrusters at the side of it. And uh, while we're still on the subject of melee weapons, why not check out the Throat Slicer, a unique variant of the Disciples Blade. And this one's very, very easy to obtain. It can actually be purchased from Caitlyn in the Nuka Town Market. It would be a relatively cheap weapon to obtain, of course, it always depends on your character build and stuff like that, depending on, you know, the pricing. And uh, the legendary prefix for this weapon is that targets bleed for 20 points of additional damage per strike, which is a very, very good sort of legendary prefix to have on a bladed weapon like this. And again, paired up with a lot of the melee and bladed perks that you can get, really makes for one hell of a devastating melee weapon, and you can get up to some crazy sort of damage modifiers uh, with this weapon if you choose your build correctly. And talking about builds, I may even make like a separate build video for melee characters where you can get crazy, crazy amounts of melee damage 
uh, with weapon like these and if you do want to see a video like that be sure to leave a like down below guys that'll let me know and i'll get around to doing that sometime in the future but moving on to the next weapon here this one is the hobbs alien blaster this is a weapon that i have covered on the channel before but again i do want to sort of include this in this compilation today and uh, this is essentially the only unique variant of the alien blaster in the whole of fallout 4 and uh, it basically does critical shots do double damage and critical meter fills 15 percent faster now the alien blaster in fallout is already a great weapon so any legendary version of this is going to be even better and to get this you'll want to head to the herbologist camp uh, which will go ahead and bring up the exact location for you guys right now upon making your way there you'll find somebody known as dara who you want to go ahead and speak to and upon speaking to her she'll then give you the quest known as trip to the stars now the beginning of this quest is fairly simple all you need to do is find five spacesuits and then bring them to her which the spacesuits can easily be found all around the galactic zone uh, one part of the galactic zone being the vault tech among the stars building is where I managed to find quite a few of them but again they are scattered pretty much all around the galactic zone and I'm pretty sure if you've explored the galactic zone you would have already have found all five of these but once you've found all five of the spacesuits go ahead and bring them back to her uh, she'll then give you a reward of 250 caps and you'll then be put onto the second part of the quest which is basically to meet Dara at the junkyard and when you meet her she'll then ask you to clear the junkyard out uh, of all the enemies in there and all the enemies are pretty simple to kill there's basically like a bunch of ants and stuff like that uh, that you'll need to take out and when you do eventually take them all out you'll then have to meet Dara again in front of the spaceship ride and upon talking to her and finishing this part of the quest she will then give you the hubs alien blaster as a reward now bear in mind the quest still continues i'm not going to spoil it for you guys but it's definitely worth checking out and continuing on the quest when you do get the weapon now coming up for the next weapon we have the quantum paddle ball now the paddle ball in general is already a unique weapon it's more on the novelty type of things and uh, with the weaponized quantum upgrade it gets a little bit better and a little bit more fun again it isn't that good in terms of damage but it is a very fun weapon to obtain and get your hands on now the paddle ball in general can actually be won in the prize terminal in the nuke cave. so just get a couple of nuke cave tickets together and uh, hopefully it will be in there for you now the nuke cave is a little bit weird but uh, sometimes i believe every 48 hours or something like that the prices actually shift and change so if it's not in there for you straight away uh, i believe wait in game 48 hours leave the nuke cave and come back and hopefully the items in there will have changed for you and the paddle ball will actually be in there and there's actually several variants you can get you can already get the quantum upgraded one from there uh, for a little bit more tickets if you're lucky enough to get it however you can just get the normal one which doesn't cost too much nuka k tickets and then you can actually go ahead and upgrade it with the weaponized quantum upgrade so now that you have the paddle ball how do you actually upgrade it well you upgrade it using the project cobalt schematics the schematics itself can be obtained after you've completed the power play quest line uh, which is actually one of the last quests you would do in nuka world and that restores the power to nuka world itself and um once the power has been restored you can actually access this underground sort of layer uh, underneath the world of refreshment via the elevator now to get there you can see the entrance that i'm going through in the world of refreshment now i'm sort of taking the back entrance of the stairway and uh, that just gets me to the location a little bit quicker but if you make your way all the way through the world of refreshment into this sort of generator room i guess i'll call it to the right side of it you'll notice a locked door which is locked by a terminal and usually uh, you couldn't access the terminal because the power was out but because you've now restored power uh, you can go ahead and access the terminal and open up the door and of course in the room you will find the elevator which you will need to go down going down the elevator will take you into i guess the secret underground layer and uh, to the left through one of the doors and if you take a right again and go through another one of the double doors there you will find a sort of test area or it, it's a test room i guess you could say and on the table in the corner is exactly where you will find the project cobalt schematics 
You'll also find a couple of Thirst Zappers and Nuka Quantum Grenades as well because Project Cobalt also works on the Thirst Zapper as well, which is another weapon uh, I'm also going to be showcasing in this video. But for now, let's stick to the Paddle Ball. Once you've picked up the Project Cobalt schematics, head to any nearby chemistry station. You'll now find a new sort of ammo in there known as the Thirst Zapper Ammo. And at the bottom, you'll find the Quantum Ammo. You need to make five of these, just five ammo, and once you've made five of the quantum ammo, you can then head to a weapon workbench. Upon selecting the paddle ball in the weapon workbench, the weaponized quantum version should now be available. Again, to get the quantum upgrade, it does cost five of the weaponized quantum ammo, and that is essentially how you'll upgrade the gun with the three different types of Nuka Cola, which is pretty awesome. So that's how you upgrade the quantum paddle. It makes it a lot more fun to use, you can see here. In terms of damage, it isn't that great. It's more of a novelty type weapon, but it definitely is a really fun one to use and definitely one for you collectors. And that goes the same for the Thirst Sapper as well. What I showed you guys is pretty much the same thing with the Thirst Sapper. Uh, just go ahead and pick up the Project Cobalt schematics. Uh, once picked up, you will then be able to modify the Thirst Sapper at a weapon workbench uh, between the Cherry Gun, the Nuka Cola Gun, as well as the Quantum Gun. And of course, the ammo can be crafted, as you guys saw there, at the chemistry station. And what's really cool about this is that it actually turns the first zapper into an actual beast of a weapon. Like, you can see the damage output here. It pretty much squirts out quantum, and it would have that sort of quantum explosion uh, that you guys also saw on the paddle ball. And uh, the same for the cherry gun as well. If you shoot the cherry gun ammo, it will shoot out Nuka Cola that sort of explodes on the target. And the Nuka Cola one is just more of a watered down version, I guess, of the cherry gun. But either way, a very good weapon to use with the first zapper and the paddle ball there. And uh, both of them, of course, can be obtained in the exact same way. And talking about novelty type weapons, there's also the unique Acid Soaker. The Acid Soaker uh, is pretty much a pistol which squirts out acid, uh, which can also be obtained via the prize terminal in the Nuke Cade for around 6,000 plus tickets. You can see here it does 10 acidic damage and it also temporarily reduces uh, the damage resistant of the enemy that is affected by it. However, it isn't all that great. Again, this is more of a novelty type weapon just to sort of collect and add to a collection, maybe put on a display case or something because while well, you're not going to fend off too well against pretty much any enemy by using this weapon, but definitely another cool one for you guys out there. Now moving on to a weapon that actually does a crap ton of damage and this is the Nuka Nuka Launcher. In addition to the Fat Man Launcher which pretty much shoots out these Nuka Fat Mans which are absolutely crazy and do a crap ton of damage. Now this is actually a quest reward for the quest given to you by Sierra Petrovita known as Cappy in a Haystack and this begins when you first talk to Sierra outside of the Nuka Cage. She'll ramble on a bit about Nuka Cola and stuff like that and eventually, after talking to her for a bit, she'll then give you the Cappy in a Haystack quest, as well as the Cappy glasses. And this pretty much tasks you to find all of the hidden Cappies around Nuka World. I believe there's like 10 in total. And if you guys want to know the exact location for each of those, I'll have a video linked in the description down below to each of the locations. It will save a lot of time during this video, and you can check out all the locations in that video. But once you've found all of the hidden Cappies, you can then head back to Sierra, and she'll be standing outside of Brad Burton's office. Upon speaking to her, she'll then ask you to input the code. Inputting the code will then open the door to Brad Burton's office itself. And that is where you want to enter inside and then go up the stairs. And just up the stairs, there's like this Nuka Cola machine. And to the side of that, you'll find a hidden button. Pressing that button will open up a hidden bookcase. And behind that hidden bookcase, you will find an elevator. Make your way down the elevator and you'll find yourself in a bit of a secret vault. Spoilers up ahead guys, I want to mention this right now just in case you don't like spoilers. Uh, but at the very end of the vault you will meet John Bradburton himself. The creator of Nuka Cola which is just absolutely crazy. Upon speaking to Brad Burton himself for a while alongside Sierra, they'll come to a conclusion where John wants you to turn off the power and kill him, and Sierra wants to keep him alive and just keep him company 
and stay down there. You know, Sierra is this sort of crazed Nuka Cola fan. And the only way to get the Nuka Nuka launcher is to turn off the power and actually kill him. That is literally the only way you're going to get this. And uh, upon turning off the power, basically the door will open. And uh, behind that door is exactly where you will find the Nuka Cola schematics, the Nuka Nuka schematics, and the Nuka Nuka launcher itself on the shelf there. Again, the Nuka Nuka Launcher is a very, very awesome weapon. It does a lot more damage than the general Fat Man Launcher. Uh, the ammo is a little bit scarce. Of course, you do need Nuka Cola Quantums to actually make it alongside a couple of other things. But either way, it is a great weapon to obtain and definitely another awesome one for you collectors. And for the final weapon of the video, a weapon that I just covered, but of course, it does have to be added to the list as you know one of the top 10 weapons in Nuka World. This is the Eternus Unique Gatlin Laser. A Gatlin Laser with the legendary prefix Unlimited Ammo Capacity, which means that you can endlessly spray this thing, making it a very, very, very good weapon to obtain and one of the best weapons you can find in Nuka World. Now, turning the weapon's a little bit more trickier than you would think. It's actually a quest reward for completing the Immoral Combat quest. However, there's about 10 different versions of a moral combat and how the quest works is somebody basically goes through the gauntlet and is ready to fight you. It's similar to how you initially arrived to Nuka World. You know, you go through the gauntlet to fight the other boss Colter. Well, the same thing's happening, but just roles reversed. And the challenger that goes through the gauntlet to face you can be random every single time. So how it works is uh, you, you'll get a moral combat, the quest itself, given to you at a random time. It can be given to you during Nuka World, you're just roaming around and stuff. However, you can trigger it manually if you go ahead and run all the way through the gauntlet from top to bottom, it should pop up for you. At least it did that for me, and that's what I showed you guys yesterday actually showing off the video there. So uh, make your way through the gauntlet, get the quest on Moral Combat, you'll then be asked to speak to Fritch. Upon speaking to him, he'll basically ask you if you want to go ahead and let the challenger go, or go ahead and kill him. Make sure that you always select to kill the challenger, otherwise this won't work and the quest will automatically end. Upon accepting to fight him, you'll then have to head into the Cola Cars Arena and face off against the challenger. Again, the problem with this quest is that the challenger is different every time. So the challenger you're looking for is the Rogue Knight. If it isn't the Rogue Knight, simply go ahead and kill him as quick as you can. And at the quest, a moral combat, will then end and at this point you need to go ahead and get the quest again you know this is a continuing quest that will keep popping up so what i did to keep triggering it was i head straight back to the nuka station just fast traveled there ran through the whole of the gauntlet again and lo and behold as soon as i entered the colder cars arena the quest and moral combat popped straight back up for me so again just repeat the process talk to fritch accept the you know accept the challenge go ahead and face off the guy again Kill him and keep repeating this process over and over again until eventually you get the Immoral Combat quest where the Rogue Knight will challenge you. Now the Rogue Knight is a legendary Brotherhood of Steel member and uh, basically when you challenge him, wait for him to pull out the weapon because the weapon that he pulls out will be the Eternus Unique Gatlin Laser. So as soon as he pulls it out, just go ahead and kill him as quick as you can. He will then drop the Eternus. He'll also have a legendary item on him because of course he is a legendary enemy. And that is exactly how you can get the Eternus. For a more detailed guide, if this one wasn't too easy to follow, I'll have a link in the description down below to a more detailed version of this, just in case you have any troubles with what I just showed you guys. But the Eternus is definitely a great weapon and definitely one to add to your collection. And that, my friends, is 10 of the best rare and unique weapons that you are going to find in Nuka World. And my wrap up of the rare weapons of Nuka World in general. Again, there was a lot that I haven't covered and I thought instead of not covering them or covering them in separate videos, why not just compile all of them into one big video for you guys uh, as sort of like a hub video that you can go to. Reminder, check the description below, probably about 20 minutes or 10 minutes after the video is live, the timestamps will be in there, uh, so you can go ahead and check that out. As always, if you did enjoy this video today and do like this type of content and want to see more top list videos for Fallout, be sure to leave a like down below guys, your support of course is always greatly appreciated on the channel. Subscribe if you're new and I will catch you guys next time with a brand new video. Peace out.